Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. In this video I'm going to talk about population genetics and as usual I recommend you to stop video here, read the questions, answers, choose the correct answers and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. And here is the first question. The net effect of the negative assortative mating is an increase in the frequency of and here is the four answers to choose from. Answer A. Heterozygotes capital A, small a, dominant homozygotes, capital A, capital A, recessive homozygotes, uh, small a, small a, and all homozygotes, that is uh, homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive. So in order to answer what is a uh, negative assortative mating, I would like to tell you the difference between positive assortative mating and positive assortative mating would be uh, when someone is uh, made or dating someone from his own group. For example, uh, from his own area, from his own country. So these people would be of the same cultural background and uh, the same ethnicity, the same nationality. And that means that people who belong to the same group would be in some extent in breed. For example, consider Japanese who were isolated for many uh, centuries. This uh, nation is uh, highly in breed if we compare with other nations, even to the Chinese who is on the mainland and who has uh, some uh, outbreeding with other uh, nationalities that surround them. And what would be consequences of the in breeding. Consequences would be that uh, in some particular locus we would have uh, homozygosity. So for example uh, if this would be uh, allele A, dominant allele A or recessive allele A we may have uh, such locus that would be homozygous dominant for example and another locus can be homozygous recessive for the different allele. And imagine that uh, someone who belongs to the different group, to different uh, nationality, uh, would be also in breed, but by chance uh, he would be in breed for first uh, locus, he would be homozygous recessive, and for the second would be homozygous dominant. So uh, if uh, these two people would met, what we would see, we would see that the progeny would be obligate heterozygous for both uh, loci. So the first one would be, the first loci would be capital A and small a, and the second would be small b and capital B. So uh, what the difference? And the difference is very substantial. When uh, someone is homozygous uh, recessive for one locus, for one trait, for example, for one protein, that means that uh, he can have some genetic disorders because most of the genetic disorders would be homozygous, homozygous recessive. I would say that 99% uh, of the genetic disorders are caused by recessive allele and less than 1% are caused by dominant allele. So, uh, as you see, uh, both uh, examples here, people who uh, would be in breed, they would have a high probability uh, of some genetic disorders. But the progeny wouldn't have such problems. Plants breeding is very close topic to me. And uh, if we would breed uh, some plants for many generations, we are going to get pure line. What does it mean? That means that in all loci, uh, such uh, plant would be homozygous. But also what we are going to get, we are going to get negative influence that we call in breeding depression. So plants become smaller, they are more susceptible to different uh, diseases and uh, on the overall they would be less robust. 
but when we cross two inbred pure lines, we are going to get progeny who is going to be almost twice bigger than their parents, that is going to be very robust, and uh, we call this hybrid vigor. So from the point of view of the genetics, uh, when people of the very different background who belongs to the different nations would meet, uh, the uh, progeny would be more heterozygous and would be more uh, healthy. But uh, if we consider cultural and uh, social uh, point of view, uh, people who would belong to the different nations would have less success in raising their children because they would be too uh, different, because their cultures would be too different, and they would have more probability to get divorced, for example, and divorce means that their progeny would uh, have less uh, access to uh, financial support, for example, and in uh, incomplete family, of course, children wouldn't be taken as much care as they would uh, be taken care in full family. But if people uh, would lose uh, ties to their cultural background, become, uh, say, Americanized, then genetic uh, health, genetic factor would be more important than uh, cultural dissimilarities. So we call positive assortative mating when someone choose the mate from his own group, from his own area, from his own country, from his own ethnicity. And we call negative assortative mating when someone choose his mate from the group who would be distant from his group. For example, Japanese would uh, mate with Chinese or with Caucasian. So such a type of mate we call negative assortative mating and here is an example so this can be person from one group and this can be person from another group and this is going to be negative assertative mating so positive assertative mating leads to uh, homozygosity whether it can be homozygous dominant uh, locus or homozygous recessive and uh, negative assortative mating, mating between people belonging to two different groups leads to heterozygosity. And this is answer A. Next question. In most human populations there is a tendency to what? And you have to choose what kind of mating. Answer A. Random mating. Answer B. Negative assertative mating. And answer C, positive assertative mating. And as you already know from uh, my explanation of the previous question, uh, most people tend to mate other people who belong to their own group, who looks like them, who has uh, the same cultural and ethnic background. And this is answer C. And... Uh, it would be very interesting to know your point of view on this topic. So please uh, write your comments below. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.